This week's episode of Roasted Opinions is a special episode in honor of Father's Day. My dad used to tell stories. He was pretty good at telling stories, although he was an indifferent writer. I get my long-winded nature from him. His stories all feature a good plot and decent dialogue hidden under mountains and mountains of information gleaned from hours of web searches, cut and pasted into chapter after chapter. By the end of each story, the characters had advanced a little, but the reader knew everything about the effects of Prussian blue on radioactive iodine. My brother and I both have a natural inability to have a short conversation. It takes me five minutes to tell him that I can't talk right now, and a half an hour to hang up the phone when we're in a hurry to go somewhere. That's dad in both of us. Conversations with dad last for hours, meandering through a plethora of tangents. A quick question was an evening's entertainment. When I visited dad, my stepmother brewed two pots of coffee on the bun coffee maker and gracefully gave us time to chat. From morning until supper time, we chatted about anything and everything, and then we watched movies together over a great meal. When I visited him, he always tried to make certain that I had an enjoyable time. To him, that meant seeing the sights in the greater Los Angeles area. Magic Mountain, Disneyland, Knott's Berry Farm, but also the La Brea Tar Pits because of my lifelong love of dinosaurs and other prehistoric beasts. Several museums because he wanted me to be exposed to culture as well as history. Because my brother was as much of a fan of trains as I was of fossils, we swung by the Tehachapi Loop one of the few places in the world where a train can drive over the top of itself if it is long enough. Dad was in the Air Force when he was younger, and he loved to show us all the places which he remembered from when he was stationed at Edwards Air Force Base. He told us his favorite service stories too. Spending the night out in California City with his buddies, hunting jackrabbits and driving all over the desert, Hiding a dead gopher snake in a vending machine to prank a friend who is terrified of all things serpentine. The list went on and on. He also told me about the things he did in his life of which he was most proud. Building model rockets and working out his own solid fuel formulas with his friends. Joining the Air Force and becoming a rocket engine technician working on the F-1 engines for the Saturn V rocket. We talked about other things too. Never quit a job until you have another one to go to. Some things are worth getting angry about. Most of the rest of life is just petty crap. I thought that you wanted to be a paleontologist. Hey son, it's the end of your marriage, not the end of the world. I know that it feels like that right now, pal, but it'll get better. Do you need anything? Dad? Do you think I should try to get her back? Um, no. Just, no. My dad was not a perfect man. He drank a few beers every day and occasionally harder stuff, despite repeated warnings from his doctor that his health was declining. He had a two-pack-a-day smoking habit, and he overindulged in foods high in fat, cholesterol, salt, and refined sugar despite a family history of heart disease, high blood pressure, and type 2 diabetes. He also had a habit of getting too comfortable at work, although his performance as an auditor was top-notch. He made bad choices from time to time which eventually cost him his career. Nothing criminal, mind you, he would never would have done that, but the kinds of stupid behaviors which one never expects from an intelligent person. It was a self-destructive streak which reached back to his childhood 
and he warned me never to follow in his footsteps when it came to professionalism. His stories about his childhood became a detailed description of his troubled history with his own father. He confessed once that he wanted to be a father because he wanted to show his dad that he could do a better job raising us than grandpa did raising him. He bristled underneath the yoke of expectations which my grandfather had for him, and thus told his own children that they could be whatever they wanted to be when they grew up. He never explained until long after high school that my career plans were pie in the sky and that I was destined for poverty if I followed them. But he was proud of me, always. When I joined the army, he told me that I had made a good decision. Grandpa took the news differently. He blamed Dad for me joining because he had different plans for my life. Grandpa's plans for my life had about as much impression on my plans as they did on my dad's. When I left the regular army for the National Guard, he asked me why, and I told him that my son was more important. Then you made the right choice, pal, was his response. He didn't sleep when I was stationed in South Korea, or when I deployed as a peacekeeper in Kosovo, or when I volunteered for a tour in Iraq. His chest swelled with pride, he said. My stepmother said that his shirts didn't fit, and laughed a little, and then she told me that his health was getting worse because he was too worried about me to take proper care of himself, or even get a good night's sleep. Don't get yourself killed, kiddo. Your dad would never get over it, she told me. When we lost him a few years ago, after the decades of hard living caught up to him finally, he couldn't speak at the end. Nothing louder than a whisper. He could only weep when I told him, I love you, Dad, and I hope that I did things right and made you proud. Pal, you're my son, he managed after a while. Just keep being yourself and do what you do best. I will always be proud of you. Always. We all know ourselves better than anyone else in this world does. Every mistake, every flaw, every bad choice, every embarrassing thing that we hide from the rest of the world. We can't hide those things from ourselves. I'm not proud of myself because I remember those mistakes. But Dad was proud of me, and I am a better man because of it. I want the man whose face I see when I shave to be the man he saw. Every day I try to be a little better than the day before. It's helped me to be a good man, and I believe that I am a good man. Someday, I may be just as good as my dad thought I was. It's a lofty goal. Wherever you are, Dad, I'm proud to be your son. I miss you, and I hope, if you can see me, that I still make you proud. Happy Father's Day, Dad. And to all the other dads out there, Happy Father's Day, gentlemen. <laughs>